Are you looking to do deals and master flipping houses? Welcome to the Do Deals Show with our host, Mr. Tim Mott. As a successful investor and mentor to many real estate investors, Tim's students consistently run six and seven figure investing businesses. Each week, you'll hear from top real estate investors who share the best strategies, systems, and secrets that you can use to be more successful. Tim and his guests will pull back the curtain for you to learn their exact tactics, tricks, and tools that are working best right now in today's real estate market. Now, let's welcome Mr. Tim Mai. All right. Well, hello, everybody. We are live on Facebook. Tom, say hi to everybody on Facebook. <laughs> hey, Tim. Hello, everyone. <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody. Today, I have my... Uh... Today I have my good friend Tom Nodone on the line with us. He's known as the Millionaire Mailman. Um, and uh, Tom is an extraordinary real estate investor. You know, last year he did a deal that made him, check this out, net profit made him uh, $256,000. That's, that's a pretty nice big deal, right? That was, that was heavy duty. That was my biggest so far, yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, Tom, Tom is a veteran. He's been doing this for 32 years now. I uh, have done tons of deals, hundreds of deals, um, and uh, and so I'm really excited to uh, do this interview with him. Um, we're gonna, we you know, before we get into the full interview here, I wanted to ask Tom. Tom, what is what is like your best tip for everyone here on Facebook on how to find deals that nobody can find? Well, that's easy. If uh, folks know me, and maybe they know the nickname that got started for me years ago in the RIA clubs was Millionaire Mailman. And the reason that came up was because I was a letter carrier for 16 years here in sunny South Florida. And I found out that, you know, when you're a mailman all, all day long, you're either walking by houses or driving by houses. And I'd see rundown vacant houses. And I learned how to research them and find out where the owners went. That's how I picked up a lot of my deals in the early days was talking to letter carriers and, and just keeping your eyes open. Wow. OK, what do you say to them? Well, it's, uh, I'd say the number one thing to say to them is, uh, first of all, don't approach them like dressed in a suit or anything like that. I mean, you want to be casual, you know, T-shirts, fine. If you notice I'm wearing my everyday uh, work shirt, which just says I buy houses cash. So, you know, immediately I, I always know that when I wear a shirt like this and I walk up to somebody, they're like, oh, OK, so you buy houses cash. You're you're not from the government or something like that. So uh, when I would walk up to a, a, a mail carrier in this day and age or even back in the days, uh, I would basically just say the first question you want to ask a letter carrier is, are you the regular on the route? Because the regular is the is the actually that's the official term of the regular mailman who shows up every day. Are you the regular carrier? Because the regular carrier He's responsible for delivering to anywhere from, I'd say, 300 on the low side to probably six or 700 on the high side residential homes. And your mailman knows more about you than you even realize. So they know a lot about that area. Wow. OK. So would you recommend to start first with the mailman that delivers to your house and build relationship with that person? Yeah, absolutely. You know, be nice to that guy. And, and uh, you know, I, I often like to ask people, you know, did you tip your mailman at Christmas time? Oh, <laughs> you know, I've never even known to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, technically, I think there's some official regulation that says you're not supposed to tip government employees. But, you know, I know when I was a mail carrier, everybody did. I mean, gosh, if you give your mailman just $20 in a Christmas card and, and enclose your I buy houses cash card in there and just say, hey, call me if you see a house with, you know, tall grass and stuff like that, you know, I, I appreciate it. So, yeah, be nice to him at Christmas. Oh, my God. That's a yeah. that's a really great idea. You know, sure. give give him a Christmas card, twenty bucks. Talk to him about yeah, you buy houses. I'm yeah. gonna do that. I'm gonna do that for for my uh, mailman. I'm gonna do that for my sisters and my brothers. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like they all live in different neighborhoods here in Houston. And right. So 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 just just that little tip, I can have you know at least three different mail carriers that's gonna uh, find me deals. That's great. Sure. Sure. And I often, you know, to compensate them, you know, after the deal actually closes. So, um, yeah, it, it's good to network just like it's good to network with anybody. Mailmen know a lot of different things about distress in the neighborhood more than you realize. Yeah, that's awesome. We're going to go into that in just a little bit here. All right, Facebook, we're going to continue with the rest of our interview offline now. Uh, and so, uh, you know, if you like this video so far, make sure you, you share it with your friends, press like, thumbs up. 
you know, hearts, whatever you want to send to us, right? And, um, and, and, you know, be on the lookout for when we post the entire interview. So with that, we'll see you later, Facebook. Take care, guys. All right, Tom, let's go into, uh, go into that. So what do they know about us that we don't know, that we don't realize? <laughs> what, what, oh, what, what do mailmen know about us? Well, um, I, I can speak from my own real life experience, and that is, you know, when a, when a mortgage company doesn't get a borrower's payment, uh, you know, usually the first thing they do is uh, a lot of times a phone call to that mortgage customer. Hey, we didn't get your payment. Next thing they do, like if the payment goes 15 days late, is a lot of times they just send out a regular first class letter and it says, hey, your, your payment's 15 days late, you know, you're going to get a late fee. And usually if it goes 30 to 60 days late, a lot of times the bank will send out a certified letter to the borrower. So I realized that my mentors that I had back in when I was starting helped me realize that, Tom, look, look at what you have available to you. I mean, all day long... If you see a certified letter coming from a return address with a mortgage company like Bank of America or one of these big mortgage companies, man, yeah, that's, that's, that's an opportunity. opportunity. That's so, a great idea. Okay. So the, that's one thing that mailmen see is it's their job, like, like it was my job, to literally walk up to their front door, knock on the door, and have a conversation with the, with the uh, borrower of the property because they have to sign for this letter. And for me, it turned in a lot of circumstances where the borrower would say, I got to get rid of this house. Do you know anybody who wants to buy it? And I'd be standing there like, yeah, me, you know. <laughs> Let, let me come back later on today in my civilian clothes and let, let's talk about your house for sale because I don't want to get in trouble and lose my job back in the early days. So I, I literally did that uh, all through my 20s and I quit the post office when I was age 35. And at that time I had like 30, uh, 36 or 37 houses I was renting out all on my mail routes. And, and yeah. <laughs> It was a wild ride. And Tim, I like to say that I kind of got started backwards in a sense because I started buying and holding and because my mentors were like the old school, like buy and hold guys. And no one ever really taught me like fix and flip or wholesale the deal. So I just figured I'll, I'll take, a, you know, take on as many mortgages I can take over and just uh, keep them as rentals. And then once I quit my job, then I had my daytimes available. So then I started doing fix and flips. Gotcha. Well, that's super smart. Um, all right. So, so, you know, so you can tell by the certified letters uh, from the mortgage company. What are other ways that, uh, um, you know, a mail carrier can tell that there's some kind of distress going on? Excellent question. You know, um, mailmen, they see a lot of stuff that we don't realize or, or the mailmen themselves don't realize are actually good signs of a, of a possible good lead for us real estate investors. So one thing they see is their mailbox piling up with mail. You know, they know the intricacies about is the house really, you know, is it really vacant? Are there, you know, water turnoff notices hanging on the doorknob? Or a lot of times you'll see the pizza delivery coupon guys, you know, all the, the door hangers build up. And I would see those newspapers piled up in the driveway, tall grass. And, and, when it comes to a mailman, you know, I would I usually start warming up to them by saying all I really want is plain view information because I'm not really asking them anything sensitive like how many people are on your mail route that are in foreclosure and you're getting <laughs> delivering certified letters to. Now I'll say, you know, do you have anybody who just really has their grass uncut and you know the house is vacant? And then if they want to volunteer more, they usually go from there because mailmen like police officers, and I guess you can say like firemen, you know what, they're public service employees. So if somebody comes up to them and asks them a question, they have to really kind of just help the public in a sense. So you're, they're allowed to give out plain view information, like how do I get to 123 Main Street, they'll tell you. Or, hey, do you, do you know anybody who has any uncut grass on their block that their house might be vacant? That's plain view information. So they, they should be willing to share that. Gotcha. Okay. That's yeah. good. Okay. I like that. Um, and okay. And, and so what are some of your tips on, you know, how to, I, I know you mentioned about the Christmas um, card thing, right? For your, for your own mailman. Uh, right. What are, what are some of your other tips on, on how to in, 
you know, initiate the 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 the, um, the conversation, but really like getting them actively working with you. Right. Okay. Um, one thing I realized was um, early on that I I actually speak mailman. Okay, it's a language. <laughs> it's it's like um, you know I guess if wherever it is that you work, if you're listening to this recording and you're a blue collar worker and you hang out in the break room, you know that every every um, occupation has its own shop talk or lingo or buzzwords. So I realized right on, uh, right from the start that I, because I was a mailman for 16 years, I know a lot of that shop talk. So um, what I did was I created actually a CD that I, I recorded and I figured, let me just talk to the mailman. Like now that I'm no longer in the uniform and I quit and I'm a full-time real estate investor, I'm like, how do I access mailmen? So uh, I'm kind of like on the same playing field as you, Tim, and anybody else listening to this recording is I, I would just um, take a CD and you can just take a microphone in your laptop and you can record a recording and say, hey, Mr. Mailman, I just want to let you know I'm a real estate investor and uh, I look for properties, you know, all over town. I buy them for cash. If you see any of these telltale signs that you probably drive by every day, like you know, newspapers in the driveway, uncut grass, a house sitting vacant, all these different things that they they don't even give it a second thought. But for us real estate investors in, in the hot markets we're in today, wow, those are good leads for us to follow up on. So, you know, I tell them if you can, all you got to do is just give me the public address and I'll follow up on it from there. And then I'll compensate them later on when we close that deal. So um, so uh, what I did was I recorded that on a CD and I, I would make that like I, I called it my letter carrier handout CD. And anybody listening to this, they can do that. Just just record a CD. Just talk to the letter carrier and tell them about what it is, what you do. It doesn't have to be real elaborate. Just take five minutes and, and give them some examples. And and maybe if you've ever, you know, done a, a deal with somebody else before and you worked it with them as a referral fee, then t tell them about that. So that that tells them what's in it for them. And uh and just hand it out to them because the mailmen have a, a full day out there on the route. And actually, you have a lot of time by yourself. So if they have a CD player or if you can put it even on a thumb drive and they can listen to it maybe when they get home. OK, those are all methods that they could just hear what you have to say. So I started handing out these CDs because you can hand them out for, you know, pennies for an audio CD. So they, they have a CD player in their car. Is that correct? I know. I used to carry one with me every single day. I had, you know, I would just plug it in the cigarette lighter so I wouldn't have to use batteries. And I, that's how I really got my, my real estate education was just by listening to recordings over and over and over. I guess maybe in a contemporary sense today we have podcasts, right? So, uh, you know, you, you, you listen to podcasts and so forth and you get educated. But right. uh, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what, what I would, I would do. do. How long is your message? Uh, it's about, uh, I stretched it out a little bit to like about 15 minutes because I actually, uh, uh, I, I kind of went into complete detail about my, my background as a mailman and some of the houses that I bought and stuff like that because I knew from mailman to mailman they would, they would listen to it. But it doesn't have to be that elaborate. It could just be something five or ten minutes. Give us, give us like an example. So, what, you know, yeah, like if I was to pop in your CD, what would I hear? <laughs> Uh, you you would hear, um, hi, my name's Tom, and I, I used to be a letter carrier just like you. Now, now, you can't say that if you weren't a letter carrier, but but I'm a real estate investor, and I just wanted to let you know that you being a letter carrier, you know, all day long you drive by houses, and you see houses that would possibly be a good buying opportunity for me, and I'd like to work with you on those houses. You know, I'd like to to partner you in on that deal. And, and why can't you? I mean, you can, you know, you can literally put them on the HUD statement if you want to, right? That, that you know, you can compensate them in some way. So um, I would just say, you know, if you have any properties that on your route that are vacant or have any of those signs of vacancy, like the newspapers, uh, the main thing we're looking for is, is vacancy. Because we, we pretty much all know that, you know, a vacant house sitting there empty doesn't do anybody any, any good. Um, somewhere there's a seller who's uh, having to make payments on it in most cases, and there's a lender that's not getting payments on it. And uh, even if the house is free and clear, you know, the, the owner still has, you know, maintenance issues with it, still has to pay the taxes and the insurance on it, and it's a, it's a liability for them. I know, Tim, just as much as I have bought vacant houses that were free and clear before, I'm sure you guys have as well. So uh, 
we just, um, you know, just let the letter carrier know. And, and, you know, I don't know the exact words, word per word. I'd have to go back and listen to the CD. But just kind of maybe, uh, you know, just type out what you want to say. And even if you have to kind of read it scripted and just, you know, ad lib it to it a little bit, the mailman will get the idea. Right. So that, that's that's awesome. I like that. Um, I'm just curious, you know, when I used to do door knocking on pre foreclosures a lot. And I notice a trend that a lot of these houses have rusted mailboxes. Uh, like I, I even, you know, one time I knock on a $3 million house and they had a rusted mailbox. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it, it almost seems like there's some kind of correlation between someone not taking care of their mailbox. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed the same thing with Christmas lights up in July. You know, it's like, you, you just know that, you know, it's, they're not the brightest bulb on the tree there that live there. You know, if they're, so, they're just they're disorganized. And, and as you've seen, a, a lot of foreclosure opportunity, it's, you know, some of it's hardship. You know, we all know the reasons people, you know, become motivated sellers. It's, you know, death in the family or they're in foreclosure. Or they've got some disarray in their lives. But I, I bought a lot of houses where the people were hoarders and they were, their lives were you know, kind of a sad story, but a true story that it was everything was just in a mess and they wound up losing their home as a result. But that's where you as an investor, you know, you can actually step into the situation and provide a positive outcome for that person so that they don't lose everything, you know, and, and give them a fair price for the house and at the same time make a profit. Right. That's awesome. All right. Now, let's talk about things like, you know, um, when when someone moves out, they get change of address, forwarding address. Um, give us some some sort of background insight, you know, because I'm not even that familiar with all the terminology around like requesting for a forwarding address and, and things like that. So can you expand on that? Yeah, well, I, I noticed and probably you have noticed, Tim, and, you know, you do direct mail campaigns and anybody listening to this who's done a direct mail campaign. Sometimes you get a lot of return mail and there's a yellow label that's, you know, the post office puts on there. Well, well, just because it's a yellow label, don't just pitch that aside real quick, you know, thinking, oh, it's a return. I mean, some of those can actually be some of your better leads. If you have, a, you know, a program that allows you to do background checks and there's a whole number of different programs that are out there in this day and age you can use to follow up on people and find their phone number. You know, chances are if the house uh, didn't get the mailing piece you sent out, it's because you know, it's probably vacant, no one's picking up the mail, and it's probably a forward expired. But read that label on there, because if the person did file a forward, a lot of times they'll the post office will forward it for the first year for free, and it'll just find its way to the recipient, which means you obviously won't be getting that piece back. But on the pieces that do come back to you, usually after the first year, if you look at that label, some will say unable to deliver and it just comes back to you. But some will say forward expired and the actual address will be typed onto that label. So when you see that, whether you're sending a postcard or you're sending a first class letter, all you have to do is just um, peel that yellow label off and just put a slash mark through the address as long as you don't open the envelope. You know, if you open it and you tape it shut, then it doesn't count. Then you got to put new postage on it. But the idea is if you get if you're doing a lot of mail and you get these returns, you don't have to put new postage on it. Peel the yellow label off, put a couple slashes through it, put forward to and then write the address where it's forwarded to that came from the yellow label and then just throw it in the mail and you don't have to re put postage on there. Now that you're. You know, I mean, it's not not a big tip. You know, you're probably saving a few bucks a month, but depending on how much mail you do. You know, if you're doing thousands of pieces of mail a month, if that's your thing, then uh, it could add up. Yeah, no, that's 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 really good. That's a good tip. Okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, okay, and then um, sometimes I notice they'll they'll say like vacant on like they'll write vacant on it. They'll write like different notes on there. So yeah. So always pay attention to what the notes say, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because uh, you know, I you know. A mailing piece is nice. A mailing piece starts the process with a seller. The mailing piece allows either the piece of mail to come back that you can follow up on, or if it's received by the, the owner of the home, then it's a chance for them to raise their hand and say, I'm interested. I want to have a conversation with Tim or Tom. 
And, you know, the, and it starts from there. And that's a huge pre-qualifier. So, you know, uh, if you know the direct mail game, you'll know that, you know, in many areas, it's probably just a 1% response rate that's considered a healthy response rate. So we know if we send out about 5,000 postcards in a month's time that we'll probably get about 50 to 60 phone calls. And out of the 50 to 60 phone calls, there should be two, and I'm going to say two good deals in there where you can make like seven to $10,000, and it, we found, you know, our mailing cost wise, it costs us about $3,000 to do that postcard mailing. So if you have a gross revenue of like 15 to 20 and your spend was 3000, well, that, that's not a bad conversion as long as you're good at converting that into a contract with that seller. Right, right, exactly. All right, awesome. Uh, share with us either your first deal or uh, a really interesting deal. Uh, you know, and yeah, share with us like a case study on, on one of those you choose. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I would say my, my first deal, um, my first deal that I did with another mail carrier was, um, I was, uh, just driving down a neighborhood here in Pompano beach, not too far from the beach. And, uh, I saw the mail truck. So I pulled over and, uh, pulled over in front of them, you know, cause you pull up behind them and they drive off. They don't even know you were there. I pulled in front of him and I just got out and I said, hey, my name's Tom and I used to be a letter carrier and, you know, kind of, you know, drop a little, you know, language on them for mail, talk mailman, mailmanese is the actual language. And uh, I said, do you have any vacant houses on your mail route that, you know, you just know have been sitting vacant for either a little while or just became vacant? And the woman said, yeah, she said it was a girl letter carrier and she said, yeah, about 10 houses down the street, right on the left. It's a vacant house and just uh, just count about 10 houses down. You'll, you can't miss it. So I go down the street and I'm counting one, two, three, four. I get up to 10. I see house, house, house. Then I see like vacant wooded lot and then house, house, house. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's a vacant wooded lot doing here? There's, I mean, I know this whole area has been built out for, for decades. So I like kind of peeked through the bushes and there was a house back there. This house had been, this house had been so neglected and I... I guess the city was probably, you know, red tagging her and, and, uh, actually they weren't, but I'm sure they were harassing her to maybe cut the bushes, but the house was so grown in, you didn't even know there was a house there. So I went up and I knocked on the door and she answered and, and I looked in her living room and what's that? She was living there. And what was worse than that was when I looked in the living room, I can see a hole in the ceiling right through the roof where the rain would just pour in and birds were flying in and out. So I was like, I was like, something's not going on right here. And I said, um, you know, I, I'm a cash buyer for houses. I said, you know, would you be interested in selling your house? And, you know, it, it, one thing turned to another. I had to touch base with her. She was like, well, I'm not sure. I thought about it for a while because I don't have the money to put on a roof and stuff. So I kept in negotiation with her and built a relationship with her. And about two to three months later, I wound up buying that house from her for cash. So, um, you know, that was just one instance where a letter carrier pointed me to a dysfunctional house sitting vacant uh, on a lot that was so grown in, you didn't even know there was a house there. We wound up buying that house for 40. We put about another 40 into it with the new roof and the remodeling and everything. We actually sold it for like 180. So we made a, a really nice profit on that. But, um, that was a lead that came from a letter carrier. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. Wow, wow. That's a cool, uh, super interesting story. So did you like, you tear that house down or you remodel it? No, we remodeled it. It had a couple of rafters in there that needed to be sistered. And uh, uh, we, man, that house, we basically stripped a lot of the drywall out of it, you know. But, you know, people think that's a big deal sometimes. I, I've got a crew that will re-drywall an entire thousand square foot house for only about 7,500 bucks. They'll, they'll tear it all out. And, and honestly, it only takes about a week to get it done. You know, from the tear out to, you know, hang in the drywall, they, they hang a thousand square foot house in like a day. And that this is if you like big rehabs. You know, you may have some of your listeners that are just wholesale deals and this turns their stomach to think about doing a big rehab like that. But, you know, you, 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 we all get to choose. You know, you choose what you like to do in this business. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Um, tools. 
you know, what are some of the tools and resources that you that you like uh, that you use in your business? Uh, I'd say uh, probably direct mail is the number one resource that that brings leads in. Of course, talking to letter carriers when I'm, when I'm out on the street. And uh, probably the, the other resource is just knowing really what, what list to hit. Well, we have been uh, mailing to a delinquent property tax list. Not, not that we buy from a service that we actually get from the courthouse. We found out that it's very unspoiled that way because we have the information you know, straight from the, uh, the property appraiser's office. And uh, we, you know, in Florida, we have a tax certificate system. I, I know every state works on a different premise when it comes to delinquent taxes. But in Florida, it seems like the sweet spot is two years because the state will allow somebody to go two years delinquent uh, before an investor has the right to file for a tax deed and actually, you know, press them for a tax deed sale. So um, we... Uh, we found that the sweet spot is right around two years because at that point, the, 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 um, the person who didn't pay their property tax knows that they're vulnerable. So, and then there's, I think, a max of seven years to let it go. But um, if you, we, uh, in fact, we just got a property under contract, which I'm closing in about two weeks. Uh, it was a delinquent tax deal. And the lady took us, she took her right to the day before the sale. And I went out to her house. It was a brand new investor. It was actually one of my students that I work with. And they didn't know what to do with the deal because it was such a short fuse. But she owned the house free and clear, $175,000 house up here in Palm Bay, Florida. And for a $175,000 free and clear house, she had a, a, a $5,000 tax bill. Oops, sorry about that. She had a $5,000 tax bill that she didn't pay. And as a result, she was uh, she was in a very vulnerable position. So we went down there and paid her tax bill and recorded a mortgage against the house for the amount of her tax bill because she was free and clear. I mean, how could we lose, right? And uh, so, well, we're going to be closing that shortly. So, wow. Okay. So, 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 yeah. You you work with students. You teach. By now, I'm sure the listeners are dying to wanting to know how to reach, you know, how to connect with you if they want to learn from you, do deals with you. Where would you like to send them? Sure. Well, they can contact me through my website, which is millionairemailman.com. And uh, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a couple free ebooks. I think there's more than one in there that they would enjoy reading about pretty much everything I just talked about. And uh, it's, yeah, they'll get a lot of benefit from it. Right. That's awesome. All right. Um, and uh, so, so any last, we're going to wrap up the call here. Any last like word of wisdom you'd like to share with everybody before we uh, say bye to them? Yeah, uh, last word of wisdom is, um, you know, if you come across a really complicated deal, there's guys like me, guys like Tim, that, you know, if you're not sure what to do with it, if I guarantee if the deal is good enough, the money is never a problem. And, and, and there's always a person who can help you figure out how, how to make an opportunity out of something that maybe you might not see as an opportunity. So, so get wise counsel. Is that that's a, that's great. I, I love it. I love it. And, and, and yeah, cause I know a lot of uh, people, especially new getting started, right? They, they have all these fear, all these concerns about, well, how do I know it's a, you know, good deal? How do I know, you know, how to handle this? How do I get funding? All of that stuff that comes up. And I love your tip of, just go in there, get started, and then if you need help, yeah. just reach out to someone. There's plenty yeah. of people. There's plenty of, you know, yeah. um, whether it's local experts, national experts that can help you. So Yeah. 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 I, I guess my last tip, and, and I tell this to everybody I know who's new starting out, this is worth writing down, and that is look for problems, not properties. If, if you have that paradigm shift, because a lot of new people starting out, they're thinking, oh, I got to go look at a property. I got to go. No, look for the problem. Don't look for the property. When you find the problem, then your opportunity to buy that is going to be just on the other side of solving that problem for the seller. I love that. I love that. So if I ever hear anyone ask me again, Tim, how do I find a good deal? I say find a good problem. Exactly. <laughs> look for problems, <laughs> not properties. <laughs> That's what I, I say. I love that. Thank you so much, Tom. This has been a really phenomenal interview. I enjoy it greatly. Um, just yeah, super grateful for you, buddy. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Tim. Same, Same here. here.
Awesome. All right, everyone, you know, if you if you enjoyed this interview and got a lot of value out of this, please give us feedback, rate us, uh, share it with your friends. Um, and with that, happy investing, and we'll see you on the next interview. All right, bye, everyone. And that's our show for today. If you have any questions or would like to get further training from Tim Mai, please visit our website at www.dodeals.com/tim.